Welcome, 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 everyone. We are live streaming at ITW 2024, and this is an exciting time. Major headlines dropping as we speak. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya, CEO and founder of JSA, and this is JSA TV, JSA Podcast. Joining me today, I am thrilled to have Tito Costa. He is the Chief Revenue Officer of Alea Data Centers, of course, Brazil's leading eco-friendly digital infrastructure platform. Tito, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Pleasure to be here. It is an exciting time and a crazy time. Let's talk sustainability. And yes. what are we seeing with all this crazy weather patterns? Of course, uh, huge flooding in Porto Alegria. Yes. And tell me, you have two data centers there. How are you doing? Yes, uh, it has been a, a very challenging moment for us in Brazil. As you mentioned, Porto Alegre is under a huge flood. Uh, now, a lot of rains and, and stuff. So, unfortunately, the river or the lagoon, or whatever you may call it, rose a lot. Uh, it affected a little bit of our operations over there, but luckily we have two data centers there. One of them fully operational, so 95%-ish of our workload is untouched by the water. So we have been seeing a lot of uh, uh, involvement from the local community, a lot of enterprise companies that were literally underwater are bringing equipment uh, by boat into our facility, so it's wow. crazy. So it's it's almost a war zone kind of thing. Uh, but luckily, we're still operational. We are helping and supporting the community. But as you said, it's totally attached to this ecosystem thing and and what's going on with the nature and in in, in the glo globally. I mean, climate crisis. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how you don't recognize it as is. And, it is. And for sure, sustainability at the forefront. Thankfully, of Alea's mission. Yes. Tell us about how you prioritize this and, and really why it's so important to your company. Well, as, uh, I mean, as, as you look into the situation in Porto Alegre, for us, uh, it's, uh, it's super, super important. It's not about greenwash anything. I mean, we, we procure, we source our power 100% is renewable sources. So we are 100% committed to, uh, uh, to those, uh, those type of, of energy. Uh, we are also, uh, just recently, we raised a sustainability linked bond. So attach it with WEs, PUEs. So that affects the interest rate of our bond. So we are fully committed to right. what's going on over there. And and also, it's the first time that a, a Latin America company attached other metrics, which are around uh, what's going on with women in our industry. We are pushing the boundaries towards uh, the amount of women in leadership. That's also one of the metrics that we have in the sustainability linked bond. So we are also trying to push a little bit on that because um, within the data center industry, as you know, we have just so many women working over there. Incredibly forward looking. Incredible. Yes. I've never heard of uh, uh, attaching it to the bond like that. Uh, clearly it uh, is. putting your... Your if I do, I mean, in. one woman less in the leadership of the company, um, that affects our interest rate. So that's how much Amazing. we are invested in this, in this, uh, in this movement. Love that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right, and we also should say Brazil. Yes. Incredible growth market, significant, significant, particularly in the tech, uh, technology sector. It is. How are you even able to meet these growing demands? It's insane. Well, it is, I mean, the problems that you see worldwide in terms of power, uh, they are majorly, majorly linked towards the, the transmissions of the power, not only the generation aspect of it. What happens in Brazil that doesn't happen anywhere else, or at least doesn't happen in, in, in the U.S., is that we not only have a green uh, type of uh, utility in Brazil, 70-ish, 75% of the Brazilian uh, utility comes from renewable sources, but also... Uh, in Brazil, we are allowed to build the transmission lines wow. and then give that back to the utility provider. That makes a difference because now we don't have that bottleneck that some companies are facing in the U.S. and in Mexico, for example. We don't have those in Brazil. So I feel like our idea of growing outside the big tier one metros like Rio and Sao Paulo, for example, yeah. going to Porto Alegre, Curitiba, Brasilia and other cities that we are uh, exploiting now, position ourselves into the... As, a, as of now, only platform, data center platform that's willing to push content data outside of the core of, of the country. Brazil is bigger than Rio and Sao Paulo, and I feel like the majority of the international companies that I talk with are beginning to understand that and are willing to make that move towards uh, a little bit closer uh, to the edge. Again, incredibly forward thinking. 
unbelievable. Well, I, I like to say that we are in the right path. I don't know if that's that forward, but yeah, I, I feel like we we tend to 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 go a little bit deep than than all the other players over there. Uh, from what I'm seeing, yes. Yeah, uh, all right, AI. Can't can't get you off this hot seat without talking AI. Absolutely. Obviously, yeah. it's dominating it's our conversation here at ITW. Yeah. Also dominating our industry, our, our need for more, yes. more, more, more. Yeah, yeah, How yeah. are you preparing for the increased workload and needed capacity? So, as coming back from from the utility uh, side of it, um, when you talk about the capacity of um, having, uh, 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 we we can actually have access to power in Brazil with fairly easily uh, compared to the U.S. and other countries in Latin America, what comes uh, to mind is also the flexibility of the buildings that you have to put in place. Because the data center that you're building now, within two years, let me backstep a little bit. Five years from now, whenever you come to an ITW or a PTC conference, the usual um, uh, density of a cabinet would be around 10-ish kilowatt per cabinet. Mm -hmm. From two years from now, now we are reaching 15, and now we are talking 40. Chances are we'll, I mean, I just came from the San Jose, and NVIDIA just deployed a one node, two cabinets, 120 kilowatt per cabinet. Yes. And this is like, I mean, yesterday, right? And we, are, we have to build data centers now that will live for 20 years. What will happen with cap density throughout this period of time? So you need to build flexible, and uh, luckily at Elea we have been able to do that. Uh, we have been uh, retrofitting the data centers that we had before. So a little bit on the sustainability side of things. Okay. We are not just dumping old buildings. We are trying to like repurpose the buildings yes. that we currently have and operate. But also whenever we are looking for the, the land banks that we have attached to our data centers or within the metros where we operate, we are always looking to the opportunity of putting liquid cooled solutions that we are trying to, again, forward thinking a little bit, what will be the capacity or density of those cabinets in five, 10 years from now. Um, so yeah, that's that's what we are we have been doing. Uh, we have uh, ready to go liquid cooled data center expansion uh, to be put together in Sao Paulo. Looking forward to do that also in Rio and our expansions in Brasilia. So yeah, that's pretty much what we have been doing. And uh, yeah, looking forward for what will land in our facility. Incredible, guys! You've heard it here first. Tito Costa, the Chief Revenue Officer at Alea Data Centers. Brazil's leading eco-friendly digital infrastructure platform. Got an incredible job. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Thank you also viewers for tuning in to JSA TV. Happy networking. Bye-bye.